So linking, I guess, the EV, so getting the car charged, um, and the solar and the Give Energy product, this is where I've got to. So, you know, again, it, it's just where I've got to, my thoughts, my testing, um, and I'm sure somebody out there will tell me that I'm all wrong and there's an easier way to do it. Um, so, um, looking at, and again, I have looked at some of the forums, I've looked at what people are saying, and I've tried a few things, and I've tried a few things that have gone horribly wrong. Uh, not horribly wrong, but, um, for instance, just discharging my battery for no apparent reason, um, and I see some of those things. Um, but, um, so this was this is a normal view for me, so it's, it's charging the battery in the morning, and it's charging the um, immersion, and then filling the battery, blah, blah, blah. That's a normal one. So on the first sort of few days I got the car, I thought it was a case of charging. So at this point I had the um, Go, the, the four hours, so I think it's the Octopus Go four hours. And I just thought with a three pin charger, because that's all I've got, what would it look like? So again, just charging it for a couple of hours at night, because I didn't want it to discharge the battery and all the rest of it. And actually at this point, I thought I would set up a discharge um, because when, if I discharge at a certain rate, um, then um, it, it would just um, keep going for as long as it could. So, so on this first day, I thought I'd just set the, the standard, set it to discharge at 400 when I went to bed at sort of 400 watts maximum on the discharge. Um, and then I think I set a reserve. So it wouldn't go anything past 30, well, 40 percent um, and then woke up in the morning and then we carried on as normal. Um, I think I tried that for a few days and then started to get into a few issues where um, I think it was discharging and then um, basically f taking it all out of the battery. In fact, I think this one um, absolutely went nuts because if you can see here it's completely discharged the decided to discharge the battery at two o'clock in the morning um, and I have a feeling looking back that it's because I, I originally set a time limit for the discharge um, and somehow I think it got completely confused uh, again I've read a few things where people have had the batteries completely discharged and stuff but it, it becomes a challenge when you're trying to do with EV because you want the, the, the car to charge um, but um, you don't want it to use the battery so when I started I thought oh, maybe I'll just do it with using a discharge um, option however um, and you can see here I've kind of kept it going so if we go forward a few days again nothing charging then didn't charge the car charged it again Again, you can see a theme here. I'm just trying to set them, the, set the discharge to a certain rate. Um, but you're always wary that it's going to suddenly discharge everything. Um, but I think by clearing the schedule and then turning the discharge, I, I, we'll have a look in a minute, but turning that off, I think fixed it. But in a minute, you'll see that I've changed the tact. I read a few things um, about having it, trying it a different way. And, and actually, I think a lot of people send tend to set it as a charge um, to rate um, and then what happens is um, I haven't been in the situation yet but I think it will complete it will discharge the battery to get to that rate um, and then maintain it so actually it's kind of a better way of doing it so um, what you'll always end up with is sort of waking up in the morning with a battery at a certain percentage um, and when when the battery's at that percent it will just use the grid so you can see here that my battery is down here at uh, whatever that is 20% um, it's then charged I've got it up to the 30% that I wanted obviously 30 35 and then it doesn't use any of the battery but just takes everything from the grid um, which will be in this case the car and actually it seems to be working really well so that's what I've stayed with at the moment I can show you a few more here um, actually this one I think it's trying to sum it up, and this is where you can make yourself make your life very complicated. Um, again, because I'm using three pin, I just want to get the most out of it. So, again, I would have known that it's a relatively, well, I'm not looking at it, it's a relatively sunny day. So what I've tried to do is 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 charge the charge the battery up, 
um, as much as I can. So this one's obviously going up to about 80%. Um, I then use no battery for the remaining up to 530. And then at this point, I've then decided to discharge the battery. So I've set a timer on the car to discharge the battery to give me some of the power back. And then as a consequence, although it's not quite here, um, the solar should then charge my battery back up. And that was kind of the theory I thought as well. So it's playing a little bit, but I'm trying to work out what all my options are with a three pin charger. Um, and then I was trying to sort of average it a bit better over the five hours. So just charge it at a certain rate. Um, and then, you know, just keep going at that really. So, um, what I've ended up doing is, is trying to charge the battery to a, to a certain amount and here so in this case I've decided that you know what to get the most out of this I'm going to charge my battery to 100% um, I'm then going to leave it, it's going to stick at 100% charge the rest of the car and then I'm going to f discharge the battery a, a certain amount in the morning and then as you can see here this is exactly what I was after was was recharging it through the solar not ideal uh, and again, on this one, you can actually see that I've done it before, just before midnight. So I'm trying to discharge the battery, knowing that it's going to be charged back up to uh, from from 30% up to 100, uh, to try and use the battery as a charging mechanism as, mechanism as well. Um, and there's a few of these, um, and I think that's currently where I am at the moment in terms of trying to do that um, as I wait for the um, car charger to, um, the, you know the the faster charger to arrive um, not ideal because the other day I got caught out um, so here in this example I thought I'll do the same kind of thing um, but I thought I'd discharge the battery um, but unfortunately what happened was it was obviously something got confused in the schedule I don't know if, I think it was the app that the Renault app what it decided to do was take a bit more um, and this is where it goes wrong. So I've completely drained my battery, um, and, and I'm, this was a couple of days ago. Um, I'm just now running off the grid, so um, trying to keep my uses to a minimum, get a bit of a, an increase here. To, but, uh, but again, at night, I'm just you know taken from the grid. It's probably the worst day I've had so far in terms of paying. But again, just keep it to a minimum. It wasn't too bad, um, and then. This has obviously, you know, got it back on track again. So I've got my charge back up to a certain percent, get it back up to what 30% here, and then do the same kind of thing. So, so that's where I am at the moment. Um, on the inverter, um, what you can do, um, and this is the way I've set it. Um, obviously, I'm setting eco. I want it to use the power that I've got when I'm ready. Um, I've now set the time charge. So between 12.30 and 5.30 um, and then I just wanted to charge to 35% every night and again I think from what I read there's a lot of people doing this and in winter they generally set it to 100 because you're not going to be charging your battery so much um, I don't think yeah I don't think I play with that too much occasionally I'll change some of the settings in here um, it seems to be better doing it in here than on the app um, I think I've got a photo of the app somewhere yeah so the app would look something like that um, and in this case this was me paying with a just in case so you, you can set the reserve you know I, I, I set a reserve before now just in case it, it did overnight discharge the whole battery so that I could have sort of 10 15 20 percent I think I was setting it 15 or 20 percent so at least I had some in the morning just in case before the charge could get back and kick back in um, and I thought it was only charging when it was below 35 but from what I read and I haven't been able to test it, it it will use your battery down to 35 and then maintain it so or as well as charging it up to that so just as a final thing on here um, people that have been have looked at this before um, this is um, my version of what I'm trying to track so I can see what's going on um, so I'm not going to explain all of it at the moment um, this is my cost that I think I've put into the car uh, and bear in mind this is from the beginning I think it's about the 8th of August so I think overnight 
anything over 400 watts I've said is going into the car um, I think that's about 13 pounds at the moment and I've spent about 17 pound at fast charges just trying them really so trying all the cards and all the combinations um, and, and trying to get my wife to do it you know the only time I go and test it with my wife um, it goes wrong because the shell recharge one in Bristol um, doesn't allow connection and again zap zap map is really good for that in terms of trying to say this one's going to be faulty um so so overall this month at the moment i've spent what 30 pounds um which is pretty good um this is so i spent about 30 pounds up to 25th and i've put about 60 pounds worth of diesel in the car so we use the car for a few other things but in the scheme of the 400 and something that I was spending before, it's next to nothing. And and bear in mind, I've done 900 miles in the, the electric one to Alton Towers and Bristol and, and work um, a couple of times. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's all counting. So um, my saving, I think at the moment is 158. I, I'm probably gonna put my um, uh, electric, I'm not sure I have to put my um, the cost of my car in here obviously I won't be an accurate reading because that's another 300 and something pounds a month. Um, in terms of um, spend, um, you can see here, so this is what I'm tracking here, so you can see that I'm putting in as much as I can overnight um, in terms of either charging my battery to 100% so then I can discharge a little bit of that or straight from the, um, straight from the charger. So I'm using quite a bit here. Um, but again, that's that's given me the the, the fuel, um, a, a couple of quid. Um, and the only other thing, so this is where I need to be a bit careful. So a couple of times I've actually charged the car. So I've been charging the car with a combination of battery. So um, obviously you need two point, I think it's two point three or two point six. Can't remember now. Um, to use the uh, granny charger, um, but obviously on a cloudy er day. Um, that's not always possible, so it will start taking from the battery. Um, so that's a bit of a combination in here. So so the solar's going into it, which is fine. Um, but that, because it's a use on the house, that counts as my payback on here. So I might need to recalculate that at some point. But again, it depends on whether I'm actually worried about that or not. Um, but I don't know. Um, but just explaining this, so if I look at this, so there's a couple of ways. So this is this month. Um, and you can see that you know the the, the amount of um, electric I'm using has, has gone up massively, um, and the cost has gone up, but not not a massive amount. If I just do that over a longer period, um, so this was before I got my battery. Um, I've obviously kind of gone down to next to nothing, so I'm just paying my daily rates, um, and then I'm really using a lot more electric in terms of charging the car. But actually, my my, my cost is only the same as before I had my battery installed so so actually it's working really well and obviously that's a saving on the um, the diesel that I'm using so um, hopefully that kind of gives you an overview of, of where I'm at um, some of the cost savings um, and on the whole I'm really pleased with it I think it's going really well um, so yeah next step for me really is to get the, the faster charger the seven kilowatt charger um, and then that will the, will help me some more um, in terms of charging it and then i'll be less worried but but from my experience it's been it's been pretty good in terms of managing the three pin um, although there are some times where especially going to alton towers you have to plan days in advance that's a real real hassle i really need to get that sorted but i know i can do it um, it's just managing when you're going to do things so um, but yeah so hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview of what the settings are a set um, and, and some of the costs that you know some of the, the cost of the, the car running the car I um, hope that was useful um, anything else just let me know thanks just one other thing I thought of before I um, as I was kind of tidy all this up um, I installed um, Home Assistant. I'd heard a few things about it, but I thought I'll give it a go and see what it can offer. Um, and actually, it gives a lot more visibility from from the Renault perspective um, in terms of what the, what's happening with the car. So I've installed it on a um, 
a Raspberry Pi um, and then I can access it through the site here. Um, funnily enough it will it will link up all your radiators so I've got some uh, light wave as I kind of explained in one of my earlier videos I've got light wave equipment um, but actually I can set and control and look at all the radiators um, and see what the temperatures are and everything um, but for this example what I was going to show you was the Zoe um, and actually it gives you a lot of useful information that it would be really nice to have on the app um, so for example um, things like charging so at the moment the car's not charging um, actually it's showing us a charge error probably haven't switched it on um, so in here what you can do is click on charging and then it shows you all the logging of what's happening so if I show more that actually you can see see what's happening. Let me pull back right back to the beginning of time. So now you can actually get a good perspective of when the car is charging. So it's charging, it's on, it's on or off. Um, and I found this really helpful. Um, might not be for some people, um, but um, you've got charging power, you've got charging state. So if I look at this one, for example, and again. There's obviously a reason, which I need to look at right now because I'm expecting it to charge a little bit. Um, there's obviously a charging error. Um, and there was one back here the other day. Um, so it might just be that the charger's not plugged in or this, that and the other. But actually it's it's quite useful to look at so you can see where everything is. Um, charge remaining. So, you know, ultimately I know how long it is, roughly how long it's going to take to charge. Um, anyway. It was just a quick overview. You know, I've installed this on a Raspberry Pi. I don't know much about it, so I'm going to have a bit more of a play, but I just thought it might be useful. Um, hopefully they might do more of this in the app because um, it would be really helpful um, just to see what's happening. But um, yeah, just thought I'd show you. Um, see when it's plugged, unplugged. Yeah, so this is um, Home Assistant. Um, I think you can install it on a PC, but I'm not 100% sure. Again, with the, the Raspberry Pis, they're just sort of low power, so you can just leave it running. But it's, again, it's been tracking it since, uh, well, I create, um, so I got the car on the 8th, but actually I sort of created this on the 16th. So, um, but it's telling me when it's plugged in. I think it says things like when the flaps open on the front door, air conditioning, so I can start, I believe I can start it. I haven't tried it yet. I could probably start charging. Um, and then you can set up, um, uh, what's the word, um, sort of routines. So I think I can set one up so that um, when the charges, when the charger, you can set up a trigger, run the action, so you can get it to do something else. Um, again, I haven't really played with it, but I thought it would be really useful to show you in terms of, you know, what what you can get from the car that unfortunately the app doesn't seem to give you and I don't see anywhere else to get it. If there's anywhere else, let me know. Um, but the only way I found to do it is here, so I can now see what you know over time what the the state of my car is um, in terms of its charge. So yeah, just something else to add. Excellent. Okay. All right. Thank you very much.